Hey guys, this is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today I have a really short video for you, which reminds me of a very bad joke. How can you tell if a politician is lying to you when he says, and in conclusion, Yes, so when I say I have a really short video, it may not be really that short. Anyways, so this is Sunday. This morning we had the Typewriter Club meeting online, hosted by Gregory Short of the Poor Typist YouTube channel. And uh, one of the typewriters I wanted to show was my Hermes Rocket. And I went to put a piece of paper in it, and I noticed as I typed on it, that the imprint is a little bit smeared. There's ink smearing happening above and below and in the line. So this afternoon I just decided to look into it and see what I could find and let's take a look. Okay, so perhaps you can see right here on the upper part of this page all the smearing that's happening uh, as I type and it seems to be agnostic as to whether it's on the left side of the page or the right side of the page just happening intermittently all over. And uh, I tried cleaning, of course, the platen and the feed rollers and made sure things like uh, the paper guide and, and the paper bill weren't rubbing on the paper. So here is a close-up of some of the smearing that was happening. So then I noticed that the ribbon in between the type guide here was kind of looped back toward the paper. And it looked to me like the tension of the ribbon was too low. And so back tension of the ribbon is really controlled by whatever the side is, the supply spool. And so in this case, I looked at the uh, right side spool. So what I'm interested in is the curvature of the ribbon right behind the type guide. I don't want that curvature to get too great or the ribbon will rub against the paper causing the smearing. That curvature of the ribbon is really directly controlled by the back tension of the ribbon, which in turn is controlled by the amount of back tension on the supply side reel, whichever reel it happens to be. So there has to be some back tension on the supply reel to keep the ribbon tight enough so it doesn't rub here. Also the ribbon vibrator, these two parts of it, you want these to be straight. You don't want them to be bent toward the paper too much, but you also don't want them to be bent too far backwards or the vibrator could rub against the type guide and cause the vibrator to hang up. And so with the ribbon spool temporarily taken off the right side ribbon drive system, uh, there is this bracket here that has the spring clip for the ribbon cover itself. But it has this little metal piece and it's supposed to run to rub on the ridge along the sprocket here, the drive sprocket for the right hand ribbon drive. And it looked like this spring wasn't tight enough against this rim here. So I had to remove the two screws to take off this bracket. And I've already done the adjustment to it. I basically had to reform or bend this spring. And it looks like it fixed the problem. Uh, I'm doing it currently on the left side. So this is the left side bracket. This is the underneath side of it. So what I've done is I've bent this spring up a little bit, which would be down more toward the rim of that. And also the tip of this had a slight bend in it. I took some needle nose pliers and I bent that a little bit more. So there's like a ridge, a central ridge in the bend of that. So it'll rub along the rim of that sprocket a little bit more uh, directly. I should also mention one of the other symptoms of the problem is when the right side sprocket was the supply side, the ribbon was actually falling off of the bottom flange of the spool, kind of hanging off down here, another indication that the back tension of the ribbon was too low. Okay, now that I've uh, bent the little spring clip on the left side bracket, I need to just put the bracket back in place and put screw it down with the two tiny machine screws and there you can see the way this spring clip rubs along the ridge on the drive sprocket for the ribbon. Putting this bracket back into place I'm going to rest the spring on top of the sprocket. This first inside hole I want to get the screw started there. The bracket underneath that holds this bracket in place is kind of flexible and you have to get one of the screws started like that and then you can rotate this bracket around slightly so the back of it is resting on the ridge of the 
segment molding and then when you put the second screw in and tighten it down it'll pull that bottom bracket up to meet this one and everything is nice and tight and now you can see the way this spring clip is rubbing against the ridge as it should to provide adequate back tension and now here is a close-up of the printing after the back tension has been fixed I have to clean a few of the type slugs of course but no smearing around the letters on the paper itself the ribbon tension is much better now Sometimes in the process of maintaining our collection, we find that we need some kind of service information, a service manual that might have the original factory adjustments. This is especially true with things like escapements. And I remember when I was working on my Smith Corona Silent Super and I had escapement issues, I went and purchased a, a typewriter repair bible for the Smith Corona Floating Shift series uh, that's published by Ted Monk. And that was invaluable in helping me to resolve all the issues of the escapement in that machine, and it now runs beautifully. So that's another resource to think about, a typewriter repair bible. You know, I found over time the most significant improvements I've made to my typewriter collection are incremental. In other words, after... I go through the process of cleaning, degreasing, repairing, getting a new typewriter back into working order. It's those further incremental improvements over time as you notice little things happen with them, like in the case of this rocket here. You go and just address that one issue, and then you go and use the machine for a while, and maybe later on you'll notice something else. You'll go back and work on that. So over time, the process ideally is that you're aiming toward a state where all of the typewriters in your collection are nearing as good as they can be, keeping in mind that nothing mechanical is ever perfect, or at least it's never perfect forever. There will always be some kind of maintenance you have to do, but that's the fun part of typewriter collecting, the hobby of using, owning, collecting, and keeping typewriters. And I really do think we are the caretakers of our typewriters as much as they take care of us in terms of the creativity they enable us and really the therapy that typewriters provide to us right we owe it to them to keep them in good shape well this is joe a little short quote short video on correcting a back tension problem in a hermes rocket causing smearing of the ribbon if you guys have any questions leave a comment down below i'd love to read it and until next time you stay well and stay creative. Bye-bye for now.